on this session i want to bring a topic about the baseline yeah and about some uh, explanation about the synchronization synchronization for the schedule yeah uh baseline so for the baseline uh in synchro means we will take a snapshot uh for our task property so there's a baseline in synchro and why we need to have a baseline in synchro i think it's just like a normal uh, planning software yeah so when we want to optimize our schedule before we change the schedule we will do a baseline so we have a reference what is before and after and besides when we uh, do the optimization optimization uh, because synchro we can consume data from other software like p6 or microsoft projects yeah or Astar project so when you want to update your new schedule with the new data so maybe at that time you need to make a backup a snapshot from your current schedule so at that time we will uh, make a baseline yeah. I will show you uh, the case yeah, so I will open one project So uh, in Synchro, if you want to see the baseline, where's the baseline in Synchro? You can go to the plan menu. Yeah. And then on the plan menu, we can see there's a baseline in scenario. When we click this, we can see the baseline windows is appear. Yeah. Right now, I don't have any baseline yet. Yeah. So uh, on this time, I will make a optimization my or change my schedule yeah because there's some condition that uh, the current schedule is not working anymore I need to I get more information that maybe a certain date is moving certain activity have a longer time yeah so before I I want to I change my schedule so this is uh, how we get the baseline I will get the baseline first to click the baseline, uh, we go to the same menu yeah, in the plan, and we have the baseline task here. When I click this, it will ask uh, this option. He will click the baseline, and we need to give the name for our baseline. And we have option if we want to baseline all the tasks. So this is uh, unique for Synchro, I think, because the baseline we can do uh, only for certain tasks if you want. Maybe some other case, some other use case, you don't need uh, to make a baseline for the whole schedule. You can do partially yeah, by select these two options here. <clears throat> okay. uh, other than this, other than clicking the icon, you also can do a baseline by right click on the schedule, yeah, on the task, and there's a baseline task here. So there's many ways to create the baseline. We we'll go for this, yeah, and I will give my baseline name, uh, baseline number one, and I keep the date, so I know when I create my baseline. I I will put the baseline for all tasks, yeah, complete tasks. Yeah. So uh, right now I do have my baseline now create baseline number one, and if you see on the baseline information here. We can uh, see that how many tasks in my baseline. I have 124 tasks here, and when I create it, yeah. <clears throat> and also there's a last modified date. You you can change your baseline, so your last modified date will be changed accordingly. <clears throat> yeah. uh, so when I create my baseline, if I see on the gen chart here. I can see there's a blue and green. Yeah, here is blue and red. Yeah. So all the blue bar is the one from my baseline because I set a blue color for my baseline. If I change it to another color, then we can see 
the color is changed to other color. Yeah, it's changed back to blue. And if I do not select my baseline, so I, the baseline color also is not shown here. So when I select my baseline, you can see the baseline color here. <coughs> and in Synchro, you can create uh, as many baseline as you need. Yeah. Maybe sometime you will uh, make a. You have so many scenario for your schedule, so you want things. I want to do like this, and then you change to another second scenario, then you take another baseline. Yeah. So you can have multiple baseline. Okay, uh, let's see. Now I already create my baseline, and I want to change my schedule. Yeah. And in this case, uh, I want to change, okay, for the building permit task, it's take 20 days for my original schedule. And I want to change that to 30 days because uh, now the process is going slow. So we need more days for this to get the permit. So we need to change that. And so I will go to the next task. And I have this foundation excavation. It's five days. Yeah. And I get information that this one also need more duration yeah and now let's see if I uh, reschedule so we can see now uh, my baseline and my current date uh, we can see the different right. Besides, uh, if we want to see the different, we can see from the GAN chat. Yeah? And then we also can do the comparison in the 3D. So I can add uh, another 3D windows. Yeah, now I have two 3D windows. And I, okay. I want to make these two windows have a link for the camera. So when I move one camera, another one will follow. To do that, I go to 3D view and go to the camera. Now I can link the second one. Now if I move, the other one also will follow. <coughs> and I will set the first window, my first 3D window, using the baseline yeah? baseline is here <coughs> yeah if you have a multiple baseline then you have your list here then you can select which baseline you want to apply for your first 3d windows <coughs> now let's go for a uh, Certain date, yeah, I will go for go for the animation. I will go for start from my schedule and I will play that. And I can stop in a certain time to see the difference. Yeah. So maybe at this point. So at this point we can see that the frame work on this area is finished but on the current schedule is still ongoing yeah, so we can see the difference if let's see on the grand chat what we can see here <coughs> so the structure area one this one yeah and we see the baseline is finished on this date but the current one is still going on until here So this is uh, the second way. If you want to see the different, we can see from GAN chart first one first way. Second, we can see from the three D model. Yeah, and if this is your uh, comparison, yeah, your 
uh, baseline schedule with your optimized schedule. Yeah, you can make a uh, apply the layout. Layout will save the uh, the setting. It will save your 3D view, how many 3D view you have, and it also will save like uh, for each every for each 3D view what setting we are doing here. Like this one example, this first 3D windows I'm using the baseline, and my second 3D windows is using the best best date. Yeah, it will save that information also. Uh, to do the layout, you can go to Navigator. Yeah. Now I can turn on my layout. I don't have anything yet. <clears throat> yeah, I will create a new one. Yeah. Uh, when we create a layout, you also can create a folder. So it will help you to uh, arrange your rec your layout if you have many layout. Yeah. I will create a folder. Maybe I can say here is a schedule optimizing of schedule optimize yeah so all my layout about schedule optimize I will put under this folder now I will click the layout save layout as yeah you can say like uh, <coughs> first scenario So later, if example, I close my first uh, 3D, and now I have one, and I change the locate my focus time, and I want to go back and see. Hey, I want to see what I was looking at before, how how I compare these two schedule. I can just go to here and just say open layout. Uh, when I do this, he will asking, do you want to save? This configuration as another layout. Yeah. I say no, yeah, because I don't want to save it. <coughs> now, after I open this, I can see again my setting. I have two windows back, yeah, and my first window is using the baseline. You can see on the title here, and my second 3D window is using the base date. Yeah. So it will come back. It will help you easily to to go back to review your schedule yeah, on your setting. <clears throat> OK. I want to also, also like, uh, on the table here, yeah, if we have our baseline selected, you also can show the date for the baseline date, when it is start, when it is finished. Yeah. To do that, uh, I will add a column here, customize the columns. I'm search, I'm searching the the column it will be start by BL baseline. Now I will show the early start. I think I put yeah before the start, and then early finish. See okay. <coughs> yeah. So actually, uh, the gain chart that we can see here, this is the date. Yeah, so we can do the comparison. Yeah. The baseline is start from. 18 April and now it starts from 25 April. She saw on this bench also. Yeah. So we can see the uh, we can compare the schedule in many uh, many many locations. Yeah. If I unselect my baseline, automatic this uh, baseline early start and finish is empty because I don't refer to any baseline. Yeah. If I select again, now I can see. My baseline is coming. <coughs> okay, and yeah, further to have the information about these two schedule in SQL, we also have a report. Yeah. In report, we can do the comparison, so we can compare. Let's see what we can do here. Compare schedule. So go to your report and compare schedule. <coughs> From here, we can. Select the baseline. Also, you can do uh, compare your synchro file to another synchro file. Yeah, if you choose this option, project, so you will browse and open another synchro file. Uh, in this case, I will just compare to my baseline. So I select this option, baseline, and I will compare everything, make it standard. But I will compare by group, yeah. by task group. 
let's see how it looks like. I uh, asking if I want to reschedule again. Yeah, I did reschedule, but I say yes, it's also okay. No, it's also okay. Yeah, just say yes now, and I will start and see that. <clears throat> okay. So now we can see that uh, the this is the old value is mean from our baseline, and this is the new value is the our base state. You can see that uh, this task, concrete task, before we have to 89 duration, and now we have 79. Yeah. You can see more. This is at least finish. Uh, yeah. What is the difference for this task? Yeah. Uh, we have a long report. Let's go for example this one. For this task, <coughs> it will show that previously we have uh, the early start, this date, yeah, and now we have this early start. So all the changes it will show here. Just the report for the comparison. <coughs> okay, and the next function. On the baseline, yeah. Now I will change my base schedule. I uh, add some two tasks, yeah. Some tasks I change the duration, and okay, maybe after that in synchro, yeah. In synchro, we also can uh, refer back. We can restore back our baseline. So our schedule will come back to the baseline. Yeah. To do the restoring, we can just simply directly on the scale on the baseline and we have a function called restore baseline task yeah. so if I click this and my task will come back to the baseline to the original one yeah. let's do that here <coughs> uh, when I restore it here also that we have also a question if I want to make this new task the best the best date to Another baseline. Yeah. Uh, I think I will just say no. Yeah. Okay. Now, as you can see now, my the date. Yeah. Baseline and the base date now is same. Come back again because I restore my baseline. Yeah. The Gantt all is still back to overlap. <coughs> yeah. I think this is uh, about the baseline when we do the optimization. The next one is uh, when we want to update our new schedule. Yeah. In this project, I'm using a Microsoft project schedule. Yeah. So I also already prepared the new update. So I want to update my schedule with the new new file. Uh, yeah. First, before that, I need to get the baseline to compare what is new and what is old. Uh, but in this case, I already have my baseline also. This my baseline is same with my my current schedule. So I don't need to create another baseline. I just simply uh, synchronize my schedule with the new data. To do that, I need to go for navigator and external data. Yeah. And we open external data. We can see that uh, data that we import in synchro. In this case, I have this Microsoft project. I click and synchronize from. This is how we synchronize the data from the to the new one. Yeah? I will browse and point to the new data. This is my new data, my new schedule. <coughs> yeah. Uh, when we do the synchronize, yeah. Let's see. We have some option here. What we want to how we want to bring new data to synchro yeah we have script a uh, skip we have synchronized we have consolidated and we have integrated yeah i already prepare a ppt to explain how this option work yeah let's open that uh, okay this is my ppt <coughs> okay now let's see <coughs> uh this is just a very simple example yeah so to easily explain what will going on
what will happen if we choose a, a option yeah synchronize or consolidate or integrated yeah so example i have four tasks that came from e6 yeah and i already import the schedule to my synchro and now my synchro also have four tasks yeah task one until task four and each task have four days duration and then after in synchro i do a modification yeah i add new task under task number two then i uh, delete the task number four which is came from the synchro uh, came from p6 and i add new task in synchro another new task yeah. but this is on on the root not on the it's just that uh, as a child for the task number two yeah. and then we have a new update from p6 yeah the new update will look like this in P6, they delete task number three, yeah, and they keep the task number four. Yeah, but in Synchro, we delete four and we keep number three. Yeah. <clears throat> and also in P6, they add new task, task number five. <clears throat> so what what will happen if we do the synchronize? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, this is our option. We have skip, synchronize, consolidate, and integrate it. Uh, the first option skip skip means do nothing do not import anything so your our schedule will not change we will have something like this yeah. in synchro <coughs> let's talk about the synchronize uh, we synchronize means you will follow with the new data yeah. so your data will exactly follow your new schedule new update so after you do synchronize, you choose the synchronize option. You will get data same like the new data. Yeah. So your <coughs> synchro task B will be gone. Your synchro task A will be gone. Just follow the new data. <coughs> Let us synchronize. <coughs> Let's see the next option. We have the consolidate. <coughs> consolidate means uh, I just make a summary. Yeah. <laughs> Consolidate means no task to be deleted. Yeah. So if your task is exist in synchro or in the new data, it will be remain in your uh, yeah in our project. Yeah. So if you use the consolidate, then the one we delete in synchro task number four, yeah, because we have it in the new data, so we will have it in our project. After we do synchronize, yeah. the one we add in synchro, yeah, task zero A and zero B also will be exist. <coughs> and the task that they delete in P6 in the new data because we are not deleting in synchro, it will be exist. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, and that is, that's any update for the same task will be update. Yeah, example this one, uh, the duration from Task two from is they change from four to three. Then we have three here also. We follow the new date, the new duration. Yeah. Same like with the synchronize, we also follow the new one. <coughs> this is the consolidate, <coughs> and the last option is integrated. <coughs> this is the option if you use a multiple schedule, means you import many. Uh, <clears throat> many schedule data to your synchro, then you only have option to use the integrated. You cannot use in consolidated or in synchronized. Yeah, you must use integrated. <clears throat> integrated will uh, follow the new data. Yeah, and it also will keep additional data that we add in synchro. Yeah. So in this case, that. Uh, the task number three is deleted in the new one, so it will also delete it in our task, in our project, after we do synchronize, because it will follow the new data. But the one we add, 0A and 0B will be remain. So this is the integrated option. <coughs> I think that's it, uh, the explanation for that option. Let's go to our synchro. Yeah. This time I will use the integrated 
yeah, standard one. <coughs> and after I do uh, synchronize, yeah, you can see, uh, yeah, the new data is completely moved, yeah, with the baseline. And again, we can do the simulation again and see how it looks like. So like in this case, we can see my new schedule is, yeah, is make it slow, yeah, <laughs> because this is the baseline already finished until this frame, but this is haven't start anything. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a a bot baseline for me. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, I have another tips that uh, maybe you interesting. Yeah. My tip is uh, I want to talk about the we have what we call here is a texture plane. Texture plane means if you have a image that you want to bring to Synchro as a <coughs> as a background. Uh, I have an example that maybe if you go to the Google map, I prepare one location in Singapore. <coughs> if you have a map and you want to bring this map to Synchro, yeah. <coughs> example, I want to bring my building under this empty location. You need to take the snapshot for this, yeah, that I already prepared also in this case. Yeah, I have made the snapshot, something like this. I save it in the JPEG file. And let's see, I will hide the the option. And I will just show my building. Uh, my building will be under this one. This is my building. I did prepare this location because uh, I see the map. Yeah, I want to put my building under this location here. Yeah. <coughs> so I zoom a little bit like this. And now how we add the image. To add the image, we just go create on the 3D, 3D windows. And we go to texture plane, texture plane, and start click the first click and then make the box how big up is the image, yeah. And then click the second click, it will pop up this window, and we point to the file that we already prepare, yeah. This file, <coughs> yes, okay. I can make give a name map yeah. <clears throat> now I can see that okay uh, my building on this location yeah I want to maybe yeah if you're if when you put the map and it's not a correct location you can simply uh, modify the location yeah click the object the map object and go edit transform yeah. here you can move up and down a little bit yeah to make uh, the correct location yeah. and now you can go and see <coughs> it will be look like this if so if you have your correct map for your project you can bring and you can make it uh, match properly. Yeah. I think that's it for me uh, for this session. Hope you enjoy. Uh, I will turn back to Alex. I will show you some other case. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I will carry on this session by showing to you how easy it is to to work in a um, collaborative environment with Synchro.
Okay, so I will uh, I will go into Synchro Workgroup Project. I will share my screen first. And Juan, can you confirm you can see my screen? Ah, uh, yes, I can see your screen. Yes. Perfect. So for this um, for this uh, demo, I will. Um, use the same model Indra one used the assigned training building but prior to this session i uploaded the, the project into what we call synchro portal basically after i upload it here within this area uh, the project becomes a synchro workgroup project uh, and we can work in multi-user mode. From this page, I will need uh, some connection details. That's why I brought it to your attention. So in here, connection info, I can visualize the connection details. They're not coming on my screen. They're loading, but that's not an issue. I already have them. So <clears throat> I invite you now also to join this project. Why not? If you have um, Synchro version 6.2.2.0 installed, uh, I will give you the connection details and please log into this project with uh, the guest username. I will put in the Q&A box the connection details right now. Just a second. Okay. You should be able now to see the connection details for uh, yeah. this project I will I will use. So let's open it. Let's log into our project which sits in the cloud. For that, we go to File, Open, Workgroup Project. Uh, you have this uh, button here. We need to configure the workgroup connection first uh, and type in the project name. Uh, pay attention because it's key sensitive, so take it uh, with demo, capital D. Uh, server name and this port is uh, 1200. I put all this in in the Q&A box. I will hit OK. I will log in as administrator, but uh, if you want to log in as well, use uh, the guest username. Again, it's key sensitive and don't, don't put any password. In my case, I have a password here. And I will log in. I don't want to save the changes to this blank project. And now it's connecting to the cloud. I'm already connected now. And in the same time, Indra one, can you please log in to this project as well using those uh, connection details? Because I will show you how I can see what Indra one is doing and also. Yeah. So yeah, I will connect now. That's great. If you so what you want me to do, uh, Alex? Uh, just a second. I will go through the model and I will ask you in a second to perform a transaction. Um, I can okay. quickly check if I'm connected to the SWP by looking here and it's saying connected. Also, my username, everything works fine. If you noticed, I already have um, two more uh, windows in here, server administration. And in here, I can see that the Indra one is connected. If you will join, I will see you as well. If you join as guest. I have also transaction history where I can see everything everyone did. And also I can roll back to specific transactions. So I go to, to my project and I will play a little bit the focus time. I will see that uh, 
still structure it is not assigned to my schedule okay it's not linked to my current schedule um and now in Indrawan, can you please assign all this still to those specific tasks okay and so when i assign this your... you will see directly yeah yes yeah. you don't need to share your now screen. i will yeah users will yeah. use i just assign it now yeah and i think you already saw okay. that my my still disappeared on the screen so um the model is live in the cloud uh, Indraman did this transaction and was updated instantly. Now, if I will play the focus time, I will see what Indraman did. So basically, Indraman uh, ran the auto matching rule to match all the still elements to their specific tasks, as you can see. It was instant. I can check this as well in here in transaction history and I can see that the other one assigned these resources to their specific tasks. So it's easy. Nice and easy. I will take take this uh, example and uh, I would like to bring into discussion um, also Synchro Open Viewer okay, and Synchro Scheduler. These two softwares, I must say, they are free. You can download them for free from our uh, website and you can connect with them as well to your uh, Synchro Workgroup project. Now, um, let's, let's pick an example. So I would like to bring my um, steel supplier into, into the workflow. I would like to share with him my 4D. I want to bring the contractors into the Synchro world, into the 4D model world. I would like to share their uh, share the 4D model with them. Um, you know, they don't need to to have a Synchro Pro if they are not doing uh, if they are not editing the 4D model. If they want just to visualize it, they can easily do that using Synchro Open Viewer. And I will show you how to create some rules because you may want to assign. Uh, the users from a specific company to some uh, roles because you want to play with the permissions. You don't want to show them your master schedule. You want to show them just uh, some areas. Yeah. And uh, I will start by creating a company. If you go in Navigator Companies, this will be still supplier. And I will assign it to their specific tasks. And maybe even more because uh, they would like to show, they would like to visualize in the 4D model how their bit, their part of the schedule integrates maybe with this uh, lab on, lab on grid, uh, with the lab on deck, first floor and all the other floors. So for all these tasks, I will assign this subcontractor, assign as supplier of tasks. Okay, for this concrete uh, tasks, they're not the supplier, but I still want to make this, this area visible to them because they would like to see how their uh, steel bits integrates with the concrete floor. I will quickly check if they have this information allocated. So customize columns, I will bring the supplier column. Okay. It's here. Now I will go and create some <clears throat> roles yes 
roles. Uh, and then go and create a role. For, so I'm, I'm showing this as a, as a best practice. I prefer to, to create first roles and then create the users and assign them to specific roles. And I'm doing this because maybe in future I want to change some permissions in bulk for all the users assigned to a specific role. Yeah. You can, of course, play with permissions at user level, but I prefer to, to play with them at the role level. So add a new role. This role will be for the steel company. So I will just steel role. And in here, I will limit some permissions. Okay, so I said that the steel supplier will see only a part of my schedule when he opens the 4D model. I will choose here uh, a task where user is supplier. Okay, and click enter. What else? As you can see, you can play with the permissions for a lot of elements within the 4D model. Uh, let's put also for resources. And that's fine. Now, I need to create users for the steel company. I will quickly add a user. And at this point, I will type in the login details. So this will be steel.user. And I will select the role I have created for that specific company so still role company is still contractor i won't put any password for now but of course you can configure also password for those specific users so i will hit ok and this is a still user now i said that i will bring into discussion the open viewer i already have it open so this is the open viewer. Okay. It looks exactly the same as the Synchro Pro, but uh, you will notice some buttons are missing from the ribbons. And now the, the still user wants to open for the project, visualize this bit. Again, file open, work group project, and type in the same details. Hit OK. The name. Now the name will be still.user. Let's see when I log in now what I can see. I'm not able to see any resources in the resources window because I chose here in, in Synchro for the roles. And we're, we're still a supplier. But I didn't put that supplier for resources. Therefore, the steel company won't be able to see the resources and then in the in the task list if i go up as you can see here is displayed only the tasks where the steel company was made as a supplier okay so i'm giving to my subcontractor access to only certain parts to only a few tasks from my schedule as you can see and you can of course play focus time visualize these bits and how how they are integrated with the slab on deck elements okay easy you can share your 4D model with your subcontractors and uh, limit the access 
play with the rules. Like this. If you later in the process will, let's say, change the role, change permissions for this specific role, let's see how it it. So I actually want uh, for my contractor to see the entire schedule to make it fast. So also he can edit them maybe. And I go back. You see the role because the user is assigned to that role. Now the user has access to all my schedule. It's instant. Okay. Let's see what else. Let me check if there are any questions. can see that uh, we have a guest as well so someone logged in we can play with the model now because the guest has uh, these permissions you can only read yeah but if I will switch here to or to write maybe let's say to all now, who who's logged in? Uh, who's logged in uh, with guest? You can now edit the tasks, and I invite you to to edit maybe this this one. Task number thirty nine. Type in something in the name, and we all will see that modification because I changed the permission for the guest role. Someone is struggling to log in. Um, there is no password for the guest user, so leave those two fields blank. All right. I guess there are no other. Uh, requests or questions we also are very very close to five minutes to the hour and uh, we will end this session so thank you very much for joining us today and have a great end of the week <laughs>